All right, all right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. Okay, so another Bible study, another breaking down of the truth of God's word, uh, revealing the mystery of the promise. All right, so this Holy Bible uh, journey series uh, continues with 2 Samuel. So we just got through 1 Samuel, a powerful book, uh, really edifying book, strengthening book. Um, and, you know, of course, a part of the historical documents, the, the historical track record in which the Bible follows that God ordained uh, in reference to his relationship with man and how he desires to, you know, ultimately bring the reality of his reality within man's world. Man's world, uh, you know, many believe God is absent from man's world, but man has to affirm the supernatural things that God is doing each and every day, uh, you know, uh, in supernatural, miraculous ways. But man does not affirm this. And so this is a, a major part of the problem. Uh, but God is bent on uh, establishing, uh, revealing himself uh, to people so that they can ultimately uh, begin the supernatural process of believing on him and living a life that is in unity with him, that represents that they are, that, that represents that he is the leader of their life, that he is the one that they willingly choose to uh, be the orchestrator, to be the, uh, the the one that orders their steps. And so that's a blessing. And so we, we're going to uh, more so look at, you know, the the path of uh, of King David's life because he's he's uh, uh, be he's going in the direction of kingship he he's about to be uh, the leader over hebron you know for a number of years seven years specifically and, and then from there he's going to go on and be king over all of israel to fulfill the very prophecy that was on his life from a youth and so all right so let's um let's start by the grace of god so you know we we have already been talking specifically about the fact that there had been some uh, essential learning lessons, uh, 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 essential things that David had experienced as a as a young uh, man. Uh, of course, the the paramount uh, experience of him defeating Goliath was something that uh, propelled his career under the king of the time, King Saul. Uh, but even before that, he had powerful testimonies of what God had uh, done in his life. And he was he was uh, focused. He was uh, sure he was uh, truly um, convinced of those things. And th that level of encounter between uh, him and God uh, positioned him to be. Uh, the confident individual that would confront the different um, circumstances and situations in his life. Uh, the the main one, of course, that we you know spoke about was the the battle between David and Goliath, and then it goes on to many other battles, and even the 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 uh, the almost endless battle between. Uh, him and Saul that there uh, that that materialized, you know, and, and so it, it was uh, many different things that he had to learn, that he had to grasp in order to uh, be who God would eventually promote him to be, and so that was uh, essential. Um, and so we see that the beginning of this, because we know that there were different individuals in those times because 
whenever there is a, a transition of power or some uh, the changing out of authorities or uh, any form of, you know, um, kingdom uh, uh, transition or switching, whenever these types of events happen, there are those in the surrounding areas that you know, want to take advantage of the moment, want to uh, establish themselves, want to uh, uh, position themselves, do things so that they could prosper, so that they could, you know, have uh, measures of access or, or authority or position. And so this is, and, and this is a problem because, you know, at times you will have those that have bad motives that uh, want to position themselves and ultimately hurt themselves. So we're going to see a lot of that in, um, you know, in, in, the, in these next coming chapters uh, as in reference to, you know, um, the the uh, death of King Saul and the you know, the, the establishment um, of uh, King David. Uh, and so in verse one of Second Samuel, um, you have, it says, and now, uh, now it came to pass at the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Malachites and David had abode two days in Ziglag, it came um, even to pass on the third day that behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent, ripped up, you know, uh, from warfare, uh, and, uh, and earth upon his head, dirt, you know, upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth, fell to the ground, um, and did obeisance, uh, uh, worshiped him, uh, to some degree, uh, honored him, you know, respected, you know, uh, uh, David's, you know, authority. Uh, and, uh, and he did, and David said unto him from whence comest thou? And he said unto him out of the camp of Israel, am I escaped? And David said unto him, um, how went the matter? Uh, I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people are fled from the battle and many of the people uh, and many uh, and many of the people also are fallen and dead and Saul and Jonathan, his son are dead also. And David said unto the young men that told him, how knowest that Saul and Jonathan, his son be dead? So he's questioning. So David, uh, as David is receiving this information, receiving this news from this young man, he is trying to be certain. He wants to be absolutely certain, you know, that uh, the battle happened to fall that way. He, he wanted to ensure that uh, this is correct information that he is receiving. Uh, so he's asking questions. He, he wants uh, to affirm uh, the news. And the young man that told that told him said, um, as I happened by chance upon Mount Gaboa, uh, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear and lo, the chariots and horsemen fell hard after him. And when he looked behind me, he saw uh, he saw me and called on to me. And I answered, uh, uh, here am I. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee uh, upon me and slay me for anguish is uh, come upon me uh, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and had brought him, uh, brought them hither unto my Lord. Uh, then David took hold of his clothes and rent them and likewise all the men that were with him and they mourned and wept and fasted until even 
for Saul and for Jonathan, his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young men that told him, whence, uh, whence, art, uh, whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger and a Malachite. And David said unto him, how was not, how was thou not afraid to stretch forth thy hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, go near and fall upon him. And he smote him uh, that he died. And David said unto him, thy blood be upon thy head. And thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. And so what we're seeing here is this, uh, encou this encounter, of course, that this young Amalekite, this young man is having with uh, David. Uh, and so David is in this foreign land, in this uh, Philistine land, uh, Ziglag. And he's there, of course, because he was chased away from the lands of Israel. And by God's favor, there was Achish, this Philistine king of Gath, that granted him this land, this particular um, land, so that he and his men uh, could reign over. That would be their territory. Uh, and so uh, there's... You know, the news that he's receiving from this young man that the uh, king of Israel had died in battle. And so he wants to confirm, he wants to be sure that this is, you know, true. And he asks some questions. And so the man gives his take, his story on the events that transpired. And we know that the story is not accurate. We know the story is not true because uh, the, the Bible doesn't say that this man um, ultimately came, by, came behind what had already happened uh, uh, in reference to Saul's death. Uh, this, uh, we know that Saul ultimately committed suicide. He committed suicide and killed himself. And so we see yet another example of an individual who wants to position himself at the, the very start of the transition of of, of rulership, of, of, of power, of authority. He wants to position himself. And so he ultimately... Um, reaps the reward of deception. He, he, he Why? Because he is trying to uh, position himself. And we, we see that even in the latter chapter uh, that we're going to eventually get to uh, in the book of 2 Samuel, that David references this particular situation. And he, and he says that this man here, this Amalekite, was looking for uh, him to have a reward for what he did. Uh, but yet, you know, he, he doesn't realize the, the gravity of the situation and he doesn't realize the heart of David. See, it, it's, 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 it's probably reasonable to some degree to think that if one man brings the head or brings the uh, crown or or brings, you know, some, you know, uh, uh, jewels from a, a prior king that he had slayed because of the circumstance that this Amalekite found himself or said that he found himself in. It's probably reasonable to think that the uh opposite or, or the uh the, the 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 king um who was maybe at odds with the other king it's uh it's to some people safe to think that it was something that would be greeted with joy greeted with celebration greeted with you know, uh, some level of happiness, you know, or or confirmation uh, in, you know, 
um, and gladness of, of some sort. But we see that that was not the situation for David. David, upon hearing the news, him and his men, they lament, they mourn, they grieve, they, th their hearts are troubled because of this news. It's something that impacts them because their desire was not the harm of King Saul. They, they, their desire, even though they were being chased, even though they were being pursued, even though if Saul had the opportunity, he would have killed every single one of them. And so the reaction uh, was not um, what the this young Amalekite was expecting. You know, uh, he was in his mind concluding that this would be something good to get him position, something good to get him rewards or riches or some measure of, of favor or or his name in the record books for this guy who did this and his name is in the record books but it's not for a good thing so so he this is so this mindset is uh, something that you know most people would uh, um position themselves to think on to affirm may be something uh, beneficial for them. But the reality is because of the compassion, because of the love, because of the, the, uh, 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 the poise, the, the, the relationship with God that David had, there was the opposite that manifested at the news of his former uh, king perishing. And so this was not something that he was at any, you know, in any way glad about. And so, so as they lamented and as they mourned and as they fasted until the uh, uh, evening of that day, this, you know, um, young Amalekite is still there. It doesn't dawn on him that this is awkward behavior for what uh, he did. You know, the fact that they're mourning, they're sad. He, he doesn't see that this is something that is not going to work out in his favor. He doesn't perceive that. He doesn't uh, understand that he's young. And, you know, in modern days in this world, they have a slogan, they have a, a, a phrase, young and dumb, uh, only because, you know, it's, uh, uh, because there's a lack of wisdom with uh, many uh, individuals uh, in their adolescent ages, in their young ages, in their youth ages. Uh, uh, it can be a very harsh, you know, f phrase or whatnot, but, you know, um, but there's a lot of experimentation that happens at adolescent ages. There's a lot of of, you know, things, you know, that happen, you know, put your finger in the socket, you know, uh, you know, uh, drive a car as fast as it can go on a regular, um, you know, uh, 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 pedestrian road, you know, or, um, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, take a skateboard and, um, ride it real fast, really, really fast, then jump off, and, you know, um, you know, ride a bike as fast as you can go, and, you know, ride a motorcycle, ride a dirt bike, ride, you know, just do experimental things for the rush of it, uh, you know, so there's a lot of hurt that comes about because of the you know, the risks, the experiments, the, you know, the, 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 the actions without consideration and wisdom. So, uh, so, so this young man <laughs> stays there. He could have probably started to make his escape, make his way out of this uh, uh, place as these men, you know, these men of David were overwhelmed. He probably could have started to, you know what? Um, this is not what I expected, so let me actually say bye-bye. But 
because of his greed, and you know, uh, David affirms this when he when he when he talks about this in retrospect when he when similar men you know come at him seeking a reward for something that they think is noble is righteous you know uh and he re references this story and 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 how he caused you know the young men the young man to fall upon this young amalekite and kill him because he stated, you know, how, how were you not afraid to raise your hand against God's anointed? How were you not afraid? Why? It, it didn't dawn in your mind not to take, you know, a weapon and, and come against the, the very king of Israel, the one who was anointed by Samuel, uh, didn't, didn't dawn on you. And, and, you know, so he perished because because of the words of his mouth. You know, he, he perished, and so uh, so this reference is something that's talked about because you have the greed in man. You know, we we talked about you know in First Samuel, First Samuel, where you had the individual um, uh, Doeg, Doeg, you know, taking the opportunity. Uh, to to uh, tell of what David and Ahimelech had done, the exchanges that were made, and uh, and then he was later on positioned to do something that none of the soldiers would do. None of the soldiers would raise their sword to kill the priests, the priest of the Lord. But yet you had this individual Doeg who 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 lacked the fear of God. And who who did not uh, 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 perceive the the weight of consequences that would be on him if he would go through with this, and he did. Uh, but the Bible doesn't depict what his consequences were. But we know that it was definitely probably harsh. And with this individual, even though the story was fabricated. Even though this story was fabricated as far as what this Amalekite did, uh, and he misdiagnosed the situation, not understanding, even though David and his men were running from Saul, that David had a love for Saul that caused him to be different among the kings, you know, around him. The level of love and compassion that David had followed him throughout his reign. And there was individuals that disagreed with the level of compassion, level of love. Now, he had his own son, Absalom, later on, who would disagree with the level of, of compassion that um, David would show uh, Amnon, who, who would be guilty of raping the sister of Absalom. And, and so these are the uh, levels of characteristics that we see that were ingrained in David that, that caused uh, him to receive much mercy from God. The, the, the word of God tells us that um, those that ultimately show mercy shall receive mercy. There is a uh, mercy that rejoices against judgment. There is uh, the, the, the knowledge of God that God wants to invest, wants to impart into man uh, that enables them to judge from a full counsel uh, and, and ultimately receive the reward of, of living that life of love and faith and mercy. And, and so, so the Amalekite, he, he doesn't understand. He, he, he doesn't perceive that. And ultimately, he dies in his youth. He dies as a young man because of this great error, this great error of not perceiving the situation, not perceiving, not taking into account the real aspects of what he needs to consider. And so he, he, uh, this young man perishes. 
And David continues, his men continue lamenting even after this extent, this long extent of time of having to, you know, um, uh, um, consider uh, this huge loss, what this loss would do to the people of God, you know, what this huge loss, you know, because he, uh, it was not just Saul, he loved Jonathan, you know, Jonathan showed him much uh, love, you know, his, he, he talks about it in the lament, he talks about it in this, um, this poem that he makes, you know, that that describes the, the, the fact that Jonathan's love that surpassed the love of woman, you know, um, you know, not because they were intimate, you know, in an unrighteous sexual way or anything like that, because you have to throw that out there because people will consider that. Um, but because he uh, his his life was precious in his. Uh, in his sight, you know, David's life was precious in Jonathan's sight, even in the face of his father, even in the face of his, that's significant, that's significant love, that's significant, he, and, and he saw that David was blameless, he saw David's track record, he saw the favor on David's life, repeated actions that described the fact that God was with him, that God was pushing him forward and anointing him to do great things in Israel. And so, uh, so you, you have his love uh, for Saul, you know, you have his, and, and that exceeding love for Jonathan that David had. Um, you know, and, and David, you know, uh, again, we, David, you know, didn't know, you know remember, cause David, um, was not born when Saul had originally sinned, had originally did what he did to, uh, ultimately position himself to lose the kingdom. He was not born. Uh, so David didn't have the full scope, the full knowledge of why he was in the position that he was in, but David would overcome. David would be the one to do what it is that God had graced him to do and to ultimately in the process, repeatedly show acts of love and kindness, uh, uh, even though God was positioning him to do things that could end his suffering uh, or end his persecution. And so the so that's valuable. That's extremely valuable in the sight of God. A heart of love, a heart of truth and compassion and mercy. That heart is is precious both before the sight of God. Um, and as we see, um, you know, Jonathan, one of the thing about, one of the things about Jonathan that I considered, uh, that the Lord allowed me to consider is that the love of Jonathan was so great in reference to David that the love of Jonathan in David, uh, David's love for Jonathan it, it, it covered certain aspects of what the king of Israel that wanted to pursue his life was doing. Sometimes that can happen. You know, you can have a, a, a wife. You can have a wife um, or for women, you can have a husband that uh, whose parents, uh, who, who may be the mother or maybe the father, may be mean, you know. Uh, and because of your love for your spouse, you are able to transfer that love uh, to where you cover and you don't even consider some of the behavior that is done in unrighteousness in reference to the, the parents, the parent of your spouse. Or it can be, you know, a, a, a child um, that, you know, you have, um, uh, let's say, for example, you were married and you have um, 
a, 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 a child that's not yours, but it's from uh, the previous relationship of your spouse and you have the grace because of your love for your spouse to love the child uh, that is not yours. You have a grace, you have a love, you have a compassion, you have a mercy, you know, uh, because those that come from your womb, biologically, you have a ingrained love for them ingrained love for them ingrained you know it's from the factory you know as far as your level of love for them uh and and so certain things you can overlook and and you can pardon you can forgive um but sometimes because of the fact that individuals may not come from your body you know there there may be a lack of you know even though it should it, it should not be so but there can be a lack of grace you know extended to them in a sense and, and so this is not something to be ashamed of per se because it's biological it's biological there there's a, a, a chemical there's chemical aspects to this this is this is nature but at the same time you know the christian of course is called to higher levels beyond nature beyond you know uh if if the 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 um the mother or father of your spouse you know is acting away you can go beyond that. You can go beyond that. Why? Because God gives us power to go beyond the, the physical aspects of what people are doing. This is why the word of God says that love covers a multitude of sins. Um, and, and whether it be the child, whether it be the spouse, whether it be a, a coworker, you know, you, 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 um, you are you have one coworker that you love and and there's another coworker there that's the the brother of the individual that you love uh, you know that you're close with but yet um you know you forgive you you know regardless of certain actions you you have it in you to overlook to you see it but you don't take it to heart you don't take it personal you're able to get to a place to where you can uh, 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 be the example of love in their sight regardless of their actions and so it, it's a important thing it's an important thing it's an important quality you know the word of god uh, tells us in the book of galatians you know as far as the 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 characteristics of the fruit of the spirit love joy peace long suffering goodness uh gentleness faith uh meekness self control these nine you know uh characteristics of the fruit of the spirit of god and and so along with that of course we ought to allow god to uh, give us grace to be led by him, you know, the, being led by his promptings uh, to follow uh, the instruction of his spirit. So, so yeah, so these qualities are important. And we see David prior to the New Testament having many of these, quali these qualities, having many of these characteristics, and he's extending this mercy. And so, one of the things that we also want to say, because we could say, oh, well, he wasn't mercy, merciful to the Malachite. Uh, well, the, the reality is, is that we have to understand the grave trespass that this Amalekite had done, uh, even though he did it in, in ignorance to the fullest, but... The, but it was God's predestined plan to allow this young individual to reap the consequences of, of you know, this level of deception and, and twisting of the truth in order to gain or profit. Um, and so um, one of the uh, important things uh is that when we look at the infraction, we, we see that he did not understand the fact that this was uh, the Lord's anointed, um, even though he did not kill Saul, 
he did not understand the fact that for him to speak to David, who had a great love, a great love for Saul, a great love for Jonathan, a great love for the, this uh, family, uh, you know, as far as um, these individuals, to speak to another foreign king, a Philistine king per se, and say, yeah, I, I did this and I killed uh, Saul at his request, you know, because he was near death anyway. For him to say that to a Philistine king who hated Saul, who fought Saul repeatedly throughout uh, th th his time, that king would have probably rewarded this Amalekite. But to an individual who loved, you know, who, who, who had the love of God in him, who had the compassion of God in him, who had characteristics and and levels of of true kingly characteristics in him like David did like like David some of his men didn't even have this you know his men did not even have this his men wanted to kill Saul his men wanted to kill Saul but David did not David had levels of 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 true kingly characteristics in him that uh, were exercised when we saw his restraint, when we saw his level of poise, his level, of, his posture, and how he affirmed the king and didn't want to uh, take anything from him uh, unrighteously, uh, uh, you know. Um, and so, So he was speaking, so this Amalekite was speaking to the wrong individual, trying to gain rewards from the wrong individual. This person here, uh, David had the, the nature of God. Uh, and this was something that ultimately exposed the, the greed and the corruption that was, that was within the Amalekite that ultimately caused his death. Uh, so of course, uh, so this is a grave um, issue. This is, an, is this is this was an abomination in the sight of David, and so this is why the Amalekite uh, ultimately had to pay with his life uh, for that transgression that he ultimately didn't commit, you know. But yet he said he committed, and so he was judged by the words of his mouth. Uh, so so yeah, so Saul. Um, and Jonathan are gone and David and his men are lamenting some of the words, some of the words I want to read, you know, cause we want to describe, we, we want to see his love for them, for, for them. Um, verse, verse 19, the beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. So uh, don't pronounce this. Don't give this news to uh, the, 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 the people, uh, the, the, the Philistine uh, nation. Uh, don't tell them, the people of Gath, don't tell them about this. They're going to celebrate. They're going to be happy. They're going to um, set up their... Uh, pagan parades. They're going to prance through the streets. They're going to drink wine. They're going to uh, do all manner of things. They're going to have a 20-day feast, you know, at the news of their arch enemy being, de being destroyed. Their, uh, their rival, their rival for many different years, many, many years, you know, um, this strong rival that they had, you know, they, at the news of his departure and his son's departure, oh man, they're going to celebrate and because they don't have the heart of God, they don't have the heart of God. And so David has the heart of God. And so he's lamenting, he's moaning, he's groaning, he's crying. His face is red, you know, because of this, um, uh, and 
you know, don't tell the people of Ashkelon. Don't don't tell don't don't tell them anything. You know, uh, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. You know, don't we don't want the daughters of the pagan people to think that their God was the uh, one responsible for the demise of their arch enemy. You know, we we don't want that. We want them to uh, be ignorant of this because this is sad. This is uh, unbearable news. You know, uh, yea, um, um, yea, mountains of Gilboa, uh, let there be no dew. Uh, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for there the shield of the mighty is uh, uh, vilely cast away, uh, the, the shield of Saul as though he had uh, not been anointed with oil from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back. The sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives. Uh, and in their death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Uh, ye daughters of Israel, uh, weep over Saul who clothed you with scarlet and uh, and other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? He talks about Saul. He talks about Jonathan. He, he is uh, deeply affected, deep, deeply grieved, you know, in reference to this. And so, uh, you know, it shows a something about him that's different, you know. And so this is why the Lord highlights, you know, David. He highlights this individual because this individual is ultimately uh, a, a special individual to him. And throughout his life, we're going to read and see special encounters and special actions that he ultimately commits that are um, a beauty in the sight of God. Uh, the word of God says that he's after God's own heart. Uh, he's after doing the things that please God. Um, and so this is something special about David. And so let's continue. Let's go to chapter two. Uh, I think we spoke enough about chapter one. And remember, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive study. This is always just just the uh, um, pulling out of, you know, specific key things that are in each chapter that should be explored in, in reference to any study um, of uh, the book of Second Samuel. And so or any other book that we, you know, look at. So in chapter two, so we see basically the advancing of, uh, of King David, you know, the adv advancing of King David through the land. Uh, and so he's going to um, pray. He's going to um, ask God whether he should advance whether he should begin to advance to any of the lands of 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 you know of Israel you know because he doesn't want to put the cart before the horse he knows that he's going to be king over all of Israel he know that prophecy is going to manifest the, the Lord God of Israel loves him. So he understands that, but he has a level of patience about himself that is uh, going to um, uh, ultimately be manifested in the, the way he, um, you know, responds. And so like in chapters before, as we've, you know, combed through 1 Samuel, we see that, again, he's going to uh, petition the Lord. He's going to pray and he's going to ask the Lord whether he should advance into the territory. 
of Israel. Uh, and, and so he prays and God says, yes, that he should go uh, to Hebron. He should go and um, govern the southern part of Israel, the, the land of Judah, um, uh, the area in which Judah uh, is would be his you know he would have from he he would have a, uh, as much land um that is let's see um as far north as jerusalem he would have as far as territory and as south as the 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 bottom of what the tribe of Judah had obtained um, into going into the desert area um, uh, down there, and so the reality is that God is giving David territory slowly. He's giving him territory because this territory is. Um, important for him to retain uh, because God desires that the people be uh, uh, healthy and under healthy uh, kingship. And so uh, he's going to establish that. So let's, let's read some uh, verses here. Um, it says in verse one, and it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up uh, into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, go up. And David said, whether shall I go up? And he said unto Hebron. So David went up uh, thither and he and his two wives also, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Carmelite, and his men that were with him, did David bring up every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying that the men of Jabesh Gilead were, uh, were they that buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord that ye have showed this kindness unto your, unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord show kindness um, and truth unto you. And I also uh, will requite you this kindness because ye have done this thing. Therefore, now let your hands be strengthened and be ye valiant for your master Saul is dead. And also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Uh, and so this here is, uh, of course, reflecting what we just said in reference to, you know, David's, um, understanding of seeking the Lord, of getting to the, uh, getting the instruction, getting the direction, getting the commandment from God uh, so that he can proceed, so that he can go in the direction that God has anointed him to, to possess, to, to grab a hold of. And he does that uh, and God ultimately tells him to go to Hebron, go to um, claim that territory uh, because the kingdom is in shambles to some degree. Um, there is a king, Ishbosheth, who is ultimately going to reign over the northern part of Israel um, with his commander, Abner. Um, but uh, the kingdom is in shambles because the king has fallen and the king's son who would be in line to reign after him also is gone. Uh, so, you know, there is an uncertainty about this northern king, the, the, the kingdom of Israel. There's a, this is this is unheard of. This should not have happened. But because of Saul's disobedience, this is what ultimately manifested. Uh, and, and so this chaotic northern kingdom is trying to pull at 
you know, anything that they can at this point to reestablish, restabilize themselves so that they can be as dominant as they were to a degree under Saul. And so we see that, you know, of course, God gives David the okay. He goes into Hebron. He He's, of course, anointed king over Judah. Uh, and God uh, is blessing him. And so he gives the people that deserve a reward, uh, unlike the greedy, in reference to this Amalekite young individual who brings Saul's crown and 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 brings certain artifacts that he got from the battle. Obviously, he was there to some degree, and he saw, and he uh, he he he. But he, um, of course, we said he fabricated the story, and then you know, uh, um, you know, uh, got some of the spoils of war, and then brought it to David you know, in order to uh, allude to the fact or prove and uh, prove his story in order to prove his story, to, to affirm his story. But yet, of course, his uh, actions were uh, uh, not actions that David was going to affirm uh, because of the, um, the, the, the lack of reverence for the king of Israel. Um, and so we see here that he rewards the ones who deserve the reward. He rewards these, these men of Jabesh Gilead. Uh, we, we know that we read about them in reference to them valiantly uh, going by night um, and taking the body of Saul, you know, taking, you know, what they could, what was not, you know, uh, what was left as a public display, you know, um, by the enemies, by the Philistines that they were at war with. Um, they went by night, took the body parts of Saul, and they gave him a proper burial. And so, David, King David did hear of this and he went ahead and he uh, wanted to affirm them and tell them, hey, that was a very heroic thing that you guys could have been in battle for that, could have, um, you know, gotten hurt for that or, you know, you could have, you know, uh, there could have been casualties, but there were not. And 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 for that heroic, her, um, heroic act, uh, you are are blessed in my sight you know and so you know they they didn't think they were going to get a reward or or honor or you know anything for that but they did that uh, because this is what you do this is what you do when you have a a genuine love and heart uh when you understand honor this is what you do this is what you do and so he, david um bless them for that. He, 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 he told them, hey, um, they, they have affirmed me and crowned me king over Judah. Um, and, and so I'm not here illegally. I'm not here um, because of, you know, some uh, bad motive or anything like that. I'm here because I was appointed I was positioned. This was prophecy coming to pass. There's many different aspects of, of what has happened that affirms me being here um, and me having this, uh, this specific position as king over Judah. And um, so uh, going forward, verse 8, it says, But Abner, the son of Ner, Captain of Saul's host took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to uh, Mahanam, Mahanam, and made him king over Gilead. So that's so that's uh, directly south of uh, 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 Jerusalem. So we know the highest. Uh, area or territory that David has would be Jerusalem, and and right above that is the area of um, uh, Gilead, which is 
uh, Ephraimite territory, but of course at this moment it's not so. It's more so just uh, a bunch of territories of the north versus a, you know a bunch of territories in reference to what David had possessed in the south. And uh, Ishbosheth also has um, claim, also has territory east or uh, also has territory wet, uh, east, yes, also has territory east of the Jordan River. And so he has that area. You know, of course, that was the area that long ago, you know, the um, children of Israel were given that, you know, because of, you know, what... Uh, uh, Moses had promised them that they would uh, inherit, you know, uh, you know, even though Moses wasn't, um, uh, 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 even though Moses was not allowed to step foot into the promised land, uh, he, uh, it was still uh, that territory uh, along with the um, western, the main western part or territory of Israel that the children of Israel was given. So, so Ishbosheth he, he he has all of that territory, northern and the northern half of Israel and the uh, the the eastern um, portions that they that 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 um, are still remaining uh, that they have, um, and so. But the reason why we're talking about this is because the kingdom of David is increasing, is expanding. And so there is this war that is commencing between these two kingdoms. There's this, in a sense, civil war between these two kingdoms, the, the kingdom of David and the kingdom of Saul, or not Saul, but his, his, his children, uh, uh, the house of Saul. Um, and so, so Abner, he positions Ishbosheth to be king, um, one of Saul's sons. Um, and it, it says, I mean, I'm king over Gilead and over. Okay. And so verse 10, um, it says Ishbosheth, uh, Saul's son was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanam uh, to Gibeon. Uh, uh, and let's see here. And uh, Joab, the son of uh, Zeruiah, Zeruiah, Zeruiah um, something like that. <laughs> uh, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, um, let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, let them arise. Then there, uh, then there arose and went over by number 12 of Benjamin, which pertained to uh, Ishbosheth and and uh, Ishbosheth the son of Saul and twelve of the servants of David and they caught every one his fellow by the head and thrust his sword into uh, his fellow's side and they fell down together uh, wherefore the place was called uh, Helkath uh, Hazrim uh, which is in Gibeon and uh, there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten and the men of Israel before the servants of David. And there were three sons of uh, Zeruiah, uh, there Joab and Abishai and Azahel. And Azahel was as light of a foot 
uh, of a foot as a wild roe, um, a deer. Uh, and Asahel pursued after Abner. And in going, he uh, turned not to the right nor uh, right right hand nor to the left uh, from following Abner. Uh, then Abner looked behind him and said, "Art thou Asahel?" And he answered, "I am." And Abner said to him, "Turn thee aside to the right hand uh, or to thy left, and and lay the and lay hold on." one of the young men and take thee his armor. Um, and Asahel would not turn aside from following him. And Abner said again to Asahel, uh, turn thee aside from following me. Uh, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then shall I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? Howbeit he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib and the spear came out behind him and he fell down there and died in uh in the same place and it came to pass that as many as came to the place where asahel fell uh, the, uh and died stood still and uh, verse 24 it says joab also, and Abishai pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they were come to the hill of uh, Am Emma, uh that lieth between Gaia uh, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner and uh, became one troop and stood at the top of the hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword de devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the uh, latter end? How long shall it be then, ere thou bid the people uh, return from following thy brethren? And Joab said, uh, as God liveth, unless thou hast spoken, surely, uh, unless thou hast spoken, surely then in the morning, the people had gone up every one fo uh, from following his brother. Uh, and so what's being communicated here, um, we see that as warfare is manifesting, warfare is manifesting and the uh, men are, uh, you know, ultimately uh, coming against each other because uh, the kingdoms are at war. Territory is a problem. The obtaining of territory, uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, there are strict uh, territorial lines that are... Uh, affirming both sides, you know, and, and the, the expansion, you know, this warfare attempt to expand the kingdom, the desire to uh, uh, expand the kingdom for David, and on the other end, Abner desiring to expand the king kingdom for Ishbosheth because he doesn't want to... Um, give up the kingdom he himself is the one who aided it, uh, and, and and caused Ishbosheth to be in position to be king um so he's fighting against the prophecies of god he's fighting against the the, the fact that god uh, wants this to manifest god god wants this to happen and so he's trying to uphold this remnant kingdom this remaining kingdom of uh of of Saul Saul's house uh, Saul's children and so uh, what we uh, see is that there is this battle that you know commences to where they have you know they're, they're by this pool and so there's young men on one side that represent their kingdom and then there's an, uh, a young men on the other side that represent their kingdom and so there's a warfare that commence you know they say let the men play let them play let them you know uh, uh fight 
for their kingdom. So we see it's in the fashion or these specific games or this these duels are in likeness of what we see with uh, what happened with David and Goliath. With David and Goliath, uh, there was the request, of course, for one man from the camp of Saul to come out and to fight this one half man, half demon, you know, from the camp of the Philistines. You know, so the Goliath, um, the 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 duel was, or or the 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 aspects of the duel, um, the rules of play were if uh, the Philistine uh, representing warrior wins the duel versus the uh, Israelite um, uh, warrior. Uh, Israelite representing warrior, then the Philistines ultimately would, you know, uh, be the masters of Israel. Or if the uh, Israelite um, warrior, who is in a sense representing his entire country, would win against the Philistine warrior, the Israelite people would be the masters over the Philistine people. So there was this agreement, there's this competition, this duel, this play that was uh, in operation. Uh, and and so we, we see that, um, of course, they didn't, you know, carry out the fullness of it. It was just a game, in a sense, a duel, in a sense, to begin real warfare, to begin warfare from uh, in between David and Goliath. But we see that the, the wind was so shocking that the Philistines fled. They, they ran away. Um, and so likewise, we see between the camp of David and the camp of Ishbosheth that there is a duel going on. Twelve men on one side, twelve men on the other side. And they, you know, they catch each other by the head uh, and they kill each other they kill each other in this duel in this competition they kill each other uh you know hopefully the the ultimate goal was for you know joab's you know army uh and the rep the 12 representatives on joab's side uh, joab would have loved for them to win and kill all the um uh the warriors of that were under abner and uh, he would have loved to uh, uh, have won that, which would be, in a sense, in their minds, a sign that Israel uh, was more dominant, that Israel would have won the war. Uh, but of course, that didn't happen. It was a draw. It was a draw. All of the men were killed. Uh, so, this, uh, so, so this began a war between them and and so we we see in this war we see abner fleeing abner running abner beginning to lose you know so his men uh you know dying certain men dying and 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 they uh are, are so he's not able to uh stand his ground he's not able to to fortify and and stay within uh, this place, this they, they probably have a stronghold to where they are able to, you know, fight from. You know, they have their items or have whatever they have as far as resources in a particular area, and they're fighting from that area. So they're fighting each other from, you know, specific areas. And so he begins to lose. Abner begins to lose, and so Abner's running away. Abner's running away, and there is this young individual, Asahel who uh, looks, who sees the situation. He sees Abner trying to flee. And so he wants to run after Abner. The, the Bible says that he's fast, he's young, he's uh, full of energy. He is running after Abner. Abner is a very experienced warrior. Um, he's been under uh, King Saul leading um, troops, leading, you know, um, you know, uh, the armies of Israel for, 
you know, years, um, uh, this young Asahel is on his tail, you know, pursuing him, you know, um, he's not able to shake him. He's not able to shake this young individual. This young individual is, is passionate and he's desiring the, uh, uh, he, he's, he's desiring, you know, um, the, a record, a, a record. He's desiring a, 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 a identity. He's desiring um, you know, um, his name being proclaimed among the, the daughters of Israel. He's desiring affirmation and, and, and he's desiring stripes. He wants some stripes. And so he, uh, you know, he's pursuing Abner and he wants to kill him. Uh, and, and he wanted, he wants it said that he was the one that rose to the, to, to the occasion. And he is, in a sense, like that young Amalekite. He's like the young Amalekite in the sense that he's young and dumb. He doesn't understand the, the great opposition uh, that he's um, entering into. He's, he lacks wisdom. He's, he's, uh, he's in warfare. He's in this battle. He's full of pride. Yeah, he's full of adrenaline. He's full of, you know, confidence without uh, foundation. He's full of confidence without foundation. Matter of fact, he possibly thinks that he's going to be the new David. He's going to think he's going to think like, oh, I'm going to be just like David in the sense that I'm going to destroy a, 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 a Philistine. He, he looks He's looking at Abner like Abner is Goliath. Oh, if David, who was young, can kill Goliath, then I, Asahel, can kill Abner. So he's thinking he's going to go and take, um, you know, take Abner's head and, and walk around Israel with it like David did. He, think, he, he thinks he's going to do some mighty things here. He thinks he's going to get a great reward. So he's foolish like the young Amalekite that we read in chapter 1. And what's going to happen is he's going to ultimately be outmaneuvered, killed by this experienced fighter. This experienced fighter takes his spear and does a move that is not predicted in the mind of this young individual. This young individual, Asahel, is gaining, he, he's closing the gap. He's getting closer. Distance between him and uh, Abner is shrinking. So the distance is shrinking and he's getting closer. He's feeling hungry. His mouth is watering. You know, he's passionate. He's going to, he, can, he, he's about to sink his teeth into this burger. And he all of a sudden is met with shock because Abner does this move to where Abner, uh, you know, speaks spins around, you know, what, without even looking, he pushes the very spear, uh, which is of course very slim, the spear, he pushes it and with such force, with such, um, uh, experience, with such power, with such, um, in, in a sense, uh, military grace. He pushes the spear into this uh, fast moving Asahel and Asahel is completely taken by surprise, has no time to go to the left or to the right, has no time to make a counter move and he is struck in the fifth rib as it says underneath his, in, basically in his stomach. In his stomach, underneath his ribs, he struck and he struck with such force by Abner that it goes through his body, through his body, and and it, and the spear appears on the other side of his body. And so, so 
the young Amalekite with the with this pride and greed that was operating in him was in likeness of Asahel. Asahel also young and proud tries to come against this Abner and ultimately dies at the hand of Abner after being warned twice, after being warned numerous times, don't pursue, don't pursue, you know, go and take some of the other young men. You know, I have other men that are under my, you know, authority. So go take one of their lives. Go, go try to battle them. Go try to fight them because I don't want to be put into a position to where I have to kill you because I know what that would cause your brother Joab to say, to, to do. I, I know he's going to say, hey, that was a young guy and, and you have too much experience and your victory against him is not fair. You, you know, you, you can't fight people that are no match for you you know that move you pulled you, you probably would have reconsidered if that was me you know and so so we see that um you know so there's a fall the fall of asahel the fall of the amalekite you know in chapter one uh so so this is what we're talking about in reference to the kingdom being affected by those at this time of transition at this time of you know the 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 switching of kingdoms uh at this time of civil war you have people that are trying to uh be buddy buddy trying to um be close to Saul you know trying to be close to David trying to be close to you know what I'm saying maybe Joab you know, trying to maybe even on, on, on the other side, trying to be close to um, Abner, you know, uh, because they they want to skip. They want, you know, uh, in, in this in this world, in this world, you know, there is a, a worldly saying in reference to fast money, fast money. Uh, people like fast money. They they they, they don't want to work for it. They, they, they don't want to. Um, do what it takes. They don't want to, um, you know, in wisdom operate in such a way that uh, affirms uh, what they get. They they want a quick way to being a millionaire, quick uh, get rich quick scheme. You know, they want that, and so that's what ultimately destroys many of the youth today. Uh, and it is a trap, a snare uh, for uh, the life of anyone who wants to pursue that mentality. You know, and this is what the devil is telling many in the world to pursue, uh, you know. And so uh, let's let's keep going here. We see here. So this warfare is happening. This warfare is amassing. This warfare between these kingdoms. Uh, and, you know, uh, so things are happening. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a, um, you know, uh, it's it's sad, but at the same time, it must happen because God is ultimately after uh, he that is going to please him. Um, you know, David, who is after God's own heart, he's after establishing uh, the, the king who is rightfully going to uh, be there. Um, and so. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah. So you know, let's go to chapter uh, three. Let's go to chapter three. Uh, we see at the end here, you know, of course, they call off this war. Uh, between the two, Joab, uh, you know, Abner is telling Joab, hey, um, war is going to only end in bitterness. This is not good. 
you know, let's call it off. It's, you know, it's over and done with. Let's, um, you know, uh, you know, go back to our separate kingdoms, you know. But of course, we know that war would still commence between the two kingdoms uh, because of the um, ultimate pursuit uh, of the motives on both sides. On both sides, there are desires, there are, um, you know, uh, the the need for more. There is the desire, the 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 hunger, the the internal, um, you know, knowledge of why they perceive or why they think that they should have more of the territories of God, uh, these territories in which God had given the children of Israel so that they can ultimately have and to be blessed within uh, their boundaries. So let's go to chapter three, uh, verse one. It says, and now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron and his firstborn was uh, Amnon uh, of Ahinoam, uh, the Jezreelite, and his second uh, uh, Shiliab, uh, Kiliab, Shiliab uh, of um, Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom, the son of Micah, uh, or Micah, uh, the daughter of the uh, Talmai, uh, king of uh, Geshir, uh, Geshir, and the fourth, uh, Adonijah, the son of uh, Haggith, and the fifth, uh, uh, Steph, Steph Tanya, uh, the son of um, Abital, and the sixth, um, uh, Ithrim, the uh, by Egal, uh, King's Egal, uh, King uh, David's wife, King David's wife. Uh, these uh, were born. Uh, to David in Hebron. So all of these were born in Hebron while he was uh, in this seven and seven year, six month period. Um, uh, verse six, and it came to pass while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was, was Rispa, the daughter of Aya, and uh, Ishbosheth um, said to Abner, uh, "Wherefore hast thou gone into my father's concubine?" Uh, then was Abner very wroth, uh, very mad, for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, "Am I a dog's head, which, uh, 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 which against Judah?" did showeth kindness this day unto the house of Saul, thy father, to his brethren and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David, that thou chargest me uh, today with a fault concerning this woman? So do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do uh, to him to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel, um, over Israel and over Judah, uh, from Dan even to uh, Be Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again because he feared him. And so this situation, this encounter between uh, Abner and uh, uh, Ishbosheth here, uh, the king of uh, northern Israel. So he's accused. He's accused of um, sexually interacting with a concubine that, you know, ultimately is for Ishbosheth uh, because of the translation 
um, of kingship from Saul to Ishbosheth. So uh, Ishbosheth possibly doesn't have any evidence of this. He probably has some some suspicions, or he probably has, you know, an inner fear that is um, inherited possibly from his father, and this fear is telling him that he needs to exercise his authority over Abner uh, because he maybe thinks Abner has too much influence or power. Uh, he maybe thinks Abner is um, maybe um, uh, in some way uh, deceitful or is um, hindering his rule to some degree. So he maybe concocts this plot, this, this plan or this accusation of him with uh, this concubine, him, um, you know, breaching in this way, in this sense. So, so the way that we see that Abner responds is that Abner is responding as if he's a man of integrity. He's res uh, responding um, as if, you know, this is outright, you know, just uh, uh, harsh uh, treatment of himself. You know, he's saying he's coming off as if he did not do this. And it's a grave insult for him to even do this and even more of an insult for uh, Ishbosheth to accuse him of this act, uh, which he is uh, portraying as this act would be would be beneath him. He's saying it's with it would be it would be beneath him. He's not guilty of this, and for him to be accused of this um, is is something that uh, he uh, is upset about because the king is overlooking the fact that he was responsible for keeping the kingdom together more than Ishbosheth is. So the fact that he is the king over the, the northern um, you know sector of the kingdom, he's just the the puppet. He's just the the individual that was placed. Uh, Abner understands that the fact that he has uh, uh, done much works, many different things as far as warring and putting his life on the line for the uh, retaining of the kingdom, for the, the, the keeping of Saul's uh, kingdom alive. You know, he's 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 acting as if he's primarily responsible for that. And he is because of the warfare that he has continually um, been a part of, has spearheaded. He's done many things that affirm uh, the, the, the this this level of response uh, in, in reference to the accusation. And so now. Uh, he is threatening, he, he's basically stating to Ishbosheth that he's that that he is basically cursed uh, if he doesn't give this kingdom over to David. It, it, he, it, it's something uh, that he, he's saying that he's there's a level of it that he may be tired of of. Of, he may be sensing the fact that he is fighting against the will of God and he sees the the favor, the grace that, you know, Joab and his warriors have, how things are panning out and and um, actually working um, for the betterment of the kingdom of David. He's seeing Judah prospering to a degree. He's seeing the fact that he's losing warriors over and over. He's seeing every time coming out of battle, you know, he has a, he, his, their numbers are, are, you know, are probably were larger than, you know, David's numbers initially, but over time, a dwindling, 
and a decreasing of the men of God, uh, uh, the, 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 the men of um, uh, the warriors of the kingdom of Israel, these men that are supposed to have this uh, favor on them, this, this God, these men that God is supposed to shine upon and, and bless with victories. They, they see the diminishing. Uh, uh, so this, the, there's this diminishing. And so Abner is seeing this and he's like, he's overwhelmed and he just, oh, okay. So let, so, hey, you know what? He tells Ishbosheth, hey, it, it, it's, it, your reign is done. It's over. It's over. Uh, and, and so he's going to translate. And so possibly God puts that in him. God uh, wants to make the transition for uh, as David being the king of all of Israel a little easier. And so he allows Ishbosheth to accuse. He allows uh, Abner to be frustrated and angered to that degree. Um, and it brings about this circumstance that causes it to be much easier, causes uh, warfare not to be the primary reason to how David uh, ultimately obtains the uh, rest of the uh, uh, the kingdom of Israel, um, and so uh, so yes, so we're seeing that uh, there is the. The, this insult that leads to uh, the 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 fact that you know Abner would literally go to the his enemy camp in a sense would go to his enemy camp he would go to the house of David and he would make peace he would begin to uh, you know promise David specific things that he would aid in the reconciling of all of Israel underneath David, which uh, David uh, is going to be fully uh, uh, happy, happy about, joyous about. Uh, but we're going to see other events that transpire because of uh, previous things that we saw. So let's see here. Um, Verse 12, and Abner sent messengers to David on behalf, on his behalf, saying, whose is the land? Saying also, uh, make thy league with me and behold, my hand shall be with thee to bring all, uh, to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, w will I, um, and he said, uh, well, I will make a league with thee, uh, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring uh, 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 Michael, uh, Saul's daughter, who David ultimately, um, David's first wife, um, who Saul had gave David after David you know, ultimately brought back the 200 uh, foreskins uh, of Philistine, uh, Philistine enemy foreskins. Uh, but of course, the agreement was 100, but he did bring back two. Uh, and Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from uh, Philethiel, the son of Laish. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her to uh, Barium, uh, then said Abner unto him, go return. And he returned. So he was sorrowful because of course his wife was being taken from him. So of course she, uh, you know, remarried, you know, after David had left originally Saul's house. Uh, and uh, she was with another man. Uh, but ultimately, in this circumstance, she was being taken because that was the grounds uh, for the agreement uh, in reference to the um, uh, the uh, 
creating of this covenant, this league, this uh, this agreement between Abner and uh, David. Uh, and so, uh, verse 17, and Abner uh, had uh, communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it, for the Lord hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spake in the ears of Benjamin. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron, um, all that seemed good to Israel and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David to Hebron and 20 men with him and David uh, made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my Lord, the king, that they may make a league with thee and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the hosts that was with him uh, were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, uh, came to the king and he hath um, sent him away and he is gone in peace. And Joab came to the king and said, what hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away? And he is, is quite gone. Thou knowest Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee and to know thy going out and thy coming in. And he know all that thou doest. And when Joab was come out of, from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sihar, uh, uh, but David knew it not. So let's look, look at some in, in key um, aspects of this. So one of the things that we're seeing is we're seeing that David is excited. David wants to, um, wants the kingdom of Israel to come together. And so David is seeing how, uh, you know, Abner is meeting the criteria for this league. He is uh, literally saying that uh, he's going to help David to become king over all of Israel. And he uh, wants to uh, meet the requirements in, in reference to bringing uh, McCall, David's first wife, and he he does that, and he comes with twenty men to uh, uh, where uh, David is in Hebron, uh, and he is you know they're they're exchanging things as far as um, c conversation. Abner is telling him that, hey, um, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. He begins to speak to the uh, to the people. And so there's this great arrangement of things that are in the process of happening. But then you have uh, after he leaves Hebron and he's gone quite a way already. You have Joab, whose brother Asahel was killed at the hands of Abner. And so we already talked about how this was a, uh, a a plot that was the fault of Asahel. It was uh, not Abner. Abner desired not to kill him. A Abner uh, said to him, you know, to go away, to go pursue someone else, to, uh, you know, leave him alone, you know, and... Asahel would not relent, and so, of course, he is killed by a superior fighter. Uh, and so now Joab has gotten news from the children, of Israel, the children of Judah here that, you know, that Abner just came in to make a league 
uh, to make a contract, to make an agreement with David so that all of Israel could be under the hand of David. And Joab immediately gets emotional. He immediately uh, gets uh, upset and angry. And so what he does is he, uh, you know, goes to the king and he, um, you know, is trying to make up what he feels uh, Abner has come to do. He wants to, uh, out of reckless emotion, he wants to raise up certain suspicions that aren't the motives of Abner. Uh, and so he says that Abner is coming in to spy out, you know, all that's under your hand. He, he wants to go your, he wants to know your going ins and coming outs. He wants to, you know, um, you know, like an undercover agent come in unnoticed so that he can, you know, ultimately spy out, scope out, you know, uh, uh, how strong you are, the, your numbers. And, and he, he wants to ultimately, you know, position himself to, you know, ultimately take you over. And so he, he's plotting, he's saying all of this to King David. Uh, King David, we, we don't see any response from him affirming what he's saying. Uh, we, we see those same type of words uh, in the mouth of Joseph uh, when Joseph was just, you know, concocting a plan uh, to see if his brothers were actually changed. And so Joseph says, you know, to them, as he's a pharaoh, he said, uh, or as he's um under the pharaoh he's he's under the pharaoh uh, uh, um the chief in the chief representative the chief individual underneath the pharaoh he is responsible f you know f over the land and he uh oversees you know who ultimately uh it has access or gains access to the resources that egypt has so you know and, and so he sees his brothers uh, that are coming from Canaan and, uh, you know, coming from their father, uh, Joseph, uh, I'm sorry, uh, coming from their father, Jacob, and he um, is shocked. He's shocked and he says to them, one of his responses to them is that they're coming to spy out the land. They're spies. They're coming to spy out the land and to see what's, um, what Egypt is like, you know, uh, they're coming to ultimately gain information so that they can take it back to their superiors so that their superiors can be in position to come and take over Egypt. But that's uh, not the plot. Uh, he's just saying that just so he can, you know, um, get them to, uh, you know, ultimately do what he wants them to do and to ultimately see uh, uh, where they are as far as their, uh, um, their person, their person. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, because he, the last time he knew of them was the time when they sold him into slavery, you know, to these, um, uh, Ishmaelite, uh, uh, uh traders, you know, that ultimately um, sold him into slavery in Egypt. And so, so these words are what Joab is saying. He's saying that because he wants to arouse fear in David. He wants to arouse, you know, suspicion and, and, and he wants retaliation to, to manifest. He wants him to be the right hand person that's going to go after Joe, uh, go after, um, Abner and then say to Ab and ultimately pursue Abner and kill Abner, uh, you know, because Abner was responsible for the death of his, uh, brother, even though this younger brother was responding in pride and responding in, you know, uh, trying to obtain something that was too big for him, trying to, you know, put on shoes that were not his size, you know, trying to obtain uh, a, a position in glory that, you know, ultimately he could not fill, he could not accomplish. 
uh, uh, because it was not God's will, you know, because we, we know God can save by few or save by many. But God uh, chooses who he does that through. He chooses, you know, because it's, it's not by might, you know, it's not by power, but it's by God's spirit, says the Lord. And so God chooses who he does it through and he gives them grace like he did young David to de to defeat Goliath. And so Joab is enraged. And so Joab is ultimately, you know, trying to take matters into his own hands because he's about to position himself to, you know, to ultimately um, uh, uh, take control of the situation because of how enraged, how um, uh, uh, bubbling his emotions uh, are. Uh, and so he's going to, uh, uh, you know, ultimately establish a deceptive plan to, um, to, to come against Abner. So uh, even though David has affirmed him, David has, you know, uh, uh, accepted the plan, uh, accepted the league, you know, he has uh, received McCall, his wife, back. Abner had done that and brought it, brought her back as he promised he would uh, at the request of David. And so we see in verses, uh, let's see here. Verses 27, and when Abner was returned to Hebron, uh, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died uh, for the blood of Asahel, his brother. He wanted revenge. And afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless uh, before the Lord for even uh, for uh, forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Nair. Uh, let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house and let there not uh, fail from the house of Joab one that hath an issue or that is a leper, or that leaneth on a staff, uh, or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So Joab and, As and Abishai, um, his brother, slew Abner uh, because he had slain their brother Asahel um, at Gibeah in the battle. And David said to Joab, uh, and, uh, and David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, rend your clothes uh, and, gird, and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. The king and King David himself followed uh, uh, the bier uh, and they... Uh, buried Abner in Hebron and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner and all the people wept and the people lamented over Abner and said uh, died Ab uh, uh, and and said died Abner as a fool uh, so King David is lamenting King David is 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 you know ultimately describing his distaste for how Abner died. Abner was supposed to be reconciled. Abner was supposed to uh, be given a second chance. He's, he's, he, he was in position to, you know, uh, uh, be an individual that would um, be a benefit, a blessing to the kingdom. Uh, we know that in the world, we have people that are um, very... Uh, smart and 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 um, uh, you know they are able to hack hack all sorts of systems and computer structures um, you know um, um, you know they're able to hack into very private uh, and secret 
you know, government agencies, um, you know, they, they, they have a mind to um, understand things and to gain, um, you know, whatever access that they're trying to gain. Uh, and so they, they are doing it from, in, they're doing it in an in, uh, unlawful sense. They're doing it illegally. And they, you know, um, are, when, and many of them, when they're caught, they uh, are hired by these secret organizations, the FBI's and the CIA's and, you know, and certain companies, you know, certain huge tech companies or, uh, you know, certain, um, uh, uh, you know, media, uh, social media companies or, you know, health care companies or, uh, you know, banks or whatnot. There are individuals that used to illegally do things, uh, but yet when they are converted, when they are accepted, when they are, uh, you know, um, given a second chance, they uh, do great things for the companies that hire them. They do great things and they're able to secure the company uh, um, on a higher level than the company could ever be secured before. They, they, they know um, how to, they, they have the, the mind of, uh, they can operate in a way where they understand what a a uh, hacker, what someone who understands those um, that that criteria could do, so they understand how to avoid it, how to uh, block against it, how to create um, systems and barriers, you know, uh, cyber barriers to to enable uh, these structures not to be compromised, not to be hindered, not to be. Uh, um, secretly hacked into anymore. And so, so Abner was supposed to be that. Abner was supposed to be this individual that was uh, powerful uh, for his kingdom uh, under Saul, under the reign of Saul. And David wanted to accept him into his kingdom, into uh, being a person that would uh, fight alongside of Joab, fight alongside or be a captain uh, governing another troop, you know, under Joab, you know, uh, there was, you know, a, 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 a high, you know, likelihood that he would be excellent, you know, under David uh, and would, would, would extremely uh, aid the superiority of the uh, kingdom of David. Um, and so he was in position to do that. But of course, we see many different factors happening here. Um, you know, and so what happens is Joab, you know, a, a very uh, superior fighter, uh, one who is, you know, governing uh, the uh, warriors of, of Judah under David. He doesn't like him. You know, he was fighting against him. He has uh, for years. He was fighting against him for years, and he has a secret distaste for him, especially because of this uh, brother, you know, of his that lost his life, you know, and and so he he wants blood for blood. He you know he he wants you know eye for an eye. In this case, he 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 does he doesn't want in any way to to rob himself of the satisfaction that he killed uh his uh arch enemy in the, in the, in this in the sense and he he wants to fulfill that lust he wants to fulfill that desire that he uh destroyed uh, he that destroyed his brother and so so we see David's response David's response was similar to his response to this young Amalekite in chapter one, you know, similar. Like he, if, if, if David could have killed him, David would have, you know, but David didn't want to kill him. It wouldn't have been wise to kill him. Uh, and so, 
but he deserved death for that. That that was, you know, something, you know, horrible for him to be killed in that manner, you know, uh, for, you know, Joab to secretly kill him and, 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 uh, um, against the wishes of the king, against what the king wanted to do, against what the king was actually in the process of establishing this agreement, this league. Uh, and, and so, you know, and so Joab was fighting against the, the will of God in a sense, in this sense. He was fighting against the will of God. He was fighting against what God was ultimately doing in the reconciling of the rest of Israel to Judah so that David could not just be the king over Judah, but the king over all of Israel as far as what was prophesied over his life. And so he says this about Abner, uh, died Abner as a fool dieth, thy hands were not bound. He was not in shackles, he was not in handcuffs, nor thy feet put into fetters. His feet weren't shackled. There was no, you know, iron bars, uh, or iron chains with with a big iron ball attached to the chain. You know, he wasn't bound or restricted. You know, he was deceived into that death. Um, as a man falleth before wicked men, so fallest thou. Um, he's talking about Joab. Joab killed him illegally. That was a cheat move. That was cheating. It was cheating. You didn't do it rightfully. You did it unrighteously. And so this is why David goes to curse Joab. And all the people wept uh, again over him. And when all the people came, uh, uh, came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also if I taste bread or aught else till the sun be down and all the people took notice of it and it pleased them as whatsoever the king did please all the people for all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner the son of Ner and the king said unto the servants know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel, and I am this day weak through, uh, through uh, though anointed king. Um, and these men, the son of Zariah, uh, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. And so he is livid that Joab had concocted this, had done this conniving uh, thing, uh, killing Abner in a secret place uh, when Abner uh, was supposed to be reconciled to the kingdom. But God predestined it. God allowed it to where Abner did not see life and allowed Abner to die at the hands of Joab. Um, because there's a protection on the righteous. There's a protection on the righteous. Abner did a lot of bad things uh, in reference to the holding up Saul for so long and the holding up of Ishbosheth. Uh, and um, so God allowed for him to lose his life and didn't allow him to transfer fully to the kingdom um, of under David. Uh, but ultimately, it was something that, you know, was ordained to happen, even though Joab got the curse from the, the curse from the Lord and from David, uh, because this was not something that was righteous. It was it was something that was done in secret, done um, in a conniving way. And it uh, ultimately um, was. Uh, something that David knew would reap the reward of destruction in the end. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, ultimately, we are seeing the kingdom of David advancing. We see the, the advancement of the kingdom of David and the uh, different individuals that are trying to do things in the process of this advancement. But even in all of the things that are happening uh, with the people, we know that there is going to be the uh, 
the covering of David in the direction of advancement uh, of his kingdom. And so, yeah, so God is uh, positioning him, you know, so he's in Hebron, uh, but he is ultimately going to uh, uh, advance and uh, ensure that all of Israel is uh, uh, positioned under his wing, under his care. Um, uh, chapter four, chapter four, uh, we see that um, it says in verse one, and when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands was fe were feeble and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of the bands that, uh, name and the name of one was Beniah and the name of the other Rechab the son of Rima a Beerthite uh, Birth, Beerthite of the children of Benjamin um for uh, Beeroth also was reckoned to uh Benjamin and the Beerthites fled to Giram and were sojourners this uh there until this day and jonathan saw son had a son that was lame of his feet he was five years old when the tidings came of saul and jonathan out of jezreel and his nurse took him up and fled and it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame and his name was uh Meth Puz, Meth Puzalith, uh, Puz, something like that, something like that. <laughs> and the sons of uh, Rimon, the Berethite, Rechab and uh, Benaiah, uh, went and came about the heat of the day uh, to the house of Ishbosheth, um, who lay on the bed at noon, and they came thither in the midst of the house and though they had uh, though they would fetch fetched wheat and they smote him under the fifth rib and Rechab and Benaiah uh Benai um Benaiah um his brother escaped so they killed uh Ishbosheth here they they murdered the king they killed the king of Israel uh, verse seven, for when they came into the house, he lay on the bed in his bedchamber and they smote him and slew him and beheaded him and took his head and got them away uh, through the plain all night. And they uh, brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron and said to the king, behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son, uh, uh, the um the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life. And the Lord hath avenged my Lord, the king this day of Saul and of his seed. And David answered uh, Rechab and ben, uh, Benaiah, uh, his brother, uh, the son of Rimon, uh, the Berethite, and said unto them, as the Lord liveth. Um, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity? When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings. I took hold of him and slew him in Ziglag, uh, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. Uh, how much more when uh, wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed shall not uh, shall not uh, shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? 
And David commanded his young men and they slew them and cut off their hands and their feet and hang them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in a sepulchre um, in the sepulchre of Abner in, um, in Hebron. So we see that this is the account that we were talking about earlier in reference that was linked to uh, what happened in chapter, in chapter one with the young Amalekite. So we see that, this, that these men come to David after killing Ishbosheth, the king over northern uh, Israel. Uh, and in this transition, as we're talking about, there are, there's this greed, there's this desire, there's this, th the feeling uh, of, oh, it's high time for, you know, some measure of reward or promotion or of some sort. And these individuals, you know, see, they, they perceive, you know, uh, but they don't perceive. They perceive, but they don't perceive. They think what they're seeing is actual, but it's not. And so they don't know the heart of David. They don't know that David loves Saul, that he loved Jonathan, that he you know, of course, he loved him different. Jonathan, he was a, a beloved brother, um, you know, uh, but they think that killing the enemy of David and bringing the head of the king of Israel to David, uh, they think that's going to excite David. They think it's going to make him happy. They think it's going to make him, make him glad and, and ultimately grant them a reward. And so David mentions this young Amalekite from chapter one and says, hey, he came to me thinking he was going to get a reward, thinking he was going to get something from me, uh, thinking that this was a good um, thing, thinking that it was good news. And so likewise, he tells these men that you think this is good news, don't you? You think that killing this innocent man on his bed, this this man who's who's he you didn't beat him in battle. You you didn't, you know, rightfully win. You didn't rightfully win. You you didn't do it in a just manner. You 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 secretly by by night went and and um you know ambushed him in his bed, you know, and killed him, you know, smote him in the fifth rib, you know, and then cut off his head and, and brought his head to me. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not right as far as, you, that's not right warfare. And so uh, he doesn't reward them. For, he rewards them. He rewards them. All right. He rewards them with death. He rewards them uh, because he, uh, he, because people are mis- pronounce that they, they're they they don't understand his heart they don't understand his heart and so they're 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 doing things to get things but yet they're being rewarded with consequence and punishment and death and so he's you know upset at how this is you know happening and he's taking this wrath out on these individuals these two men here um and so he causes their death uh, and he ultimately buries the head of Ishbosheth in Abner's sepulcher that's in Hebron. And so, so we have a lack of understanding. We also have a lack of covenant because one of the things that we see is that the young Amalekite did not know David in the sense that he didn't have a agreement, a pre-agreement, a pre-arrangement with him to where if he tells him uh, this information to where David can consider and not kill him for this news or these men here, uh, there's no covenant, there's no agreement, there's no pre 
understanding that allows them to not reap, you know, ultimate corruption and death for their actions. So, for example, like in the in the um, in the world, uh, in reference to working, working uh, for companies, or whether it be you know a corporate company, or whether it be a fast food chain, or working for uh, you know some you know uh, driving truck company, or um, you know, or whatever it may be, whether it be a government position or a, a lower position. Uh, there are uh, policies in place like uh, it's called uh, good faith reporting, good faith reporting. So good faith reporting is a agreement that the employee has with the employer to enable them to disclose information or or tell about certain circumstances or certain um aspects of what they have witnessed that can be a hindrance to the profitability of the company that can hinder the uh, uh the, the, that can break or breach rules um that the company is responsible for adhering to um that could cause the company uh, loss and, and, and damages and, and all, and, and, and that could cost the, you know, uh, company, you know, uh, um, cost the company and make them pay fines. You know, if, if whatever is the breach is not dealt with. And so the good faith reporting is when you have this agreement in place to where there's no retaliation for what's said to the, uh, uh, supervisors, uh, uh, what's said to the managers, uh, because um, there should be no retaliation for uh, the individual that wants to say things that they've witnessed that can ultimately hinder the flow or the um, actual um, uh, integrity of the company. And so what we have is you have this Amalekite from chapter one and these men here from chapter four who don't have a agreement in place. They don't have a covenant in place. They don't have a, 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 a league in place. And so because of that, they don't have any loyalty. There's no loyalty. There's no... Um, you know, no structure uh, or system that's protecting them after they come forth and say what they're saying to David. After they say to King David, hey, um, we have done this and killed Ishbosheth, or we have done this and, um, you know, killed Saul after Saul told, told me, the, Ish, the, the uh, Malachite, to kill him. After, you know, King David sober, sobers up, he's like, no, you guys are going to die. You got you who killed Ishbosheth and you who killed Saul, apparently, you are going to die uh, because I don't know you. I don't have a relationship with you. I know you're coming here just to get a reward, just to uh, get close to me, just to get honor, just to get... Uh, some measure of notoriety. I'm going to kill you because you deserve death because you don't know that what you did was a great infraction. It was something that deserves death. It was something that uh, you ought not have done. You did it illegally and uh, your reward is uh, punishment. Uh, and so, so yeah, so good faith reporting in the world uh, in the work world would protect a person from uh, saying things to a manager that would um, seemingly cause them to uh, be uh, uh, looked at as um, 
uh, someone that unnecessarily said something about that individual that may be, may be breaking laws or this uh, individual who may be costing the company money in this particular category, uh, which can cause the company all sorts of problems. And so there is a protection that these men in, in chapter one and chapter four did not have. And so they were going to receive the full uh, the full wrath that would come because of their own deceptions and so um and and trespasses and 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 corruption and so this is what we see in the kingdom this as uh, uh david's kingdom is ascending you have multiple individuals that are trying to position themselves to be things and they uh ultimately are being judged by God. God is ensuring that those around David are pure, are perfect, are righteous uh, to a degree. And he is push, positioning them to ultimately be a benefit to the kingdom that David is building, that God wants to be erected uh, so that the children of Israel can be blessed, can can ultimately advance, can ultimately be uh, what God had ordained his children to be and to reap. Uh, and so God is uh, establishing David. And so in Heb so we're going to begin to talk about uh, this transition from Hebron to now King David having more territory and governing all of Israel, governing more territories of Israel as more of the nation is submitted to him, comes to him, comes to him and ultimately is uh, aiding him in the rightful reign that he has been appointed to uh, uh, be in it and, and, and to advance in the earth. And so God bless each and every one of you that have been watching. And uh, ultimately, um, as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in Jesus name. All right. See you next time. Second Samuel chapters five and on. God bless you.